off once we get started. I'll just wait for people to come in um, and just see if anyone has any questions before we start. So if there's anything you're unsure of, anything you want to ask me, if you want to ask me now because I'll be turning the comments off. Hi Sarah. Um, uh, we're going to do a about a 30 minute flow, might be a couple minutes longer, see how we get on. Um, if you've got anything going on in the lower back, any sort of um, medical conditions going on in the body that's just com uncomfortable for you, then this might not be the right class because we are going to be exploring our range of movement in the back, so it might be a little bit too much, um, but otherwise we'll come to make a start. So can everyone hear me okay? Um, oh, pretty loud, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to switch the comments off. So let's do that now. And we're going to come to start. We're going to start a little different, little differently to how we normally start. We're going to start lying down on our fronts, okay? So as you come to lie onto your belly, take your arms overhead and you're going to bring the forehead down onto the mat. And rather than letting your feet collapse out to the side, can you see that my legs here are really disengaged and they're out open to the side? I want you to bring your feet in around about hip width apart so that your heels line up almost with the sit bones. And then notice if your heels are turned out to the side, can you keep your heels li lifted almost so they're pointing up towards the ceiling? Your toes are pointed back behind you and you're going to press down through the tops of the feet. Can you see very subtly here that my knees begin to lift off of the mat as I press down through the tops of my feet here? Then with my arms forward, I'm going to turn, I'm going to come onto the forehead. And then just relax the upper body, still keeping some engagement in the legs here. I'm going to keep my head lifted whilst I talk to you, but keep your forehead down onto the mat. And just take a few nice deep nourishing breaths through the body and just notice how they feel here as you lie onto your front. So breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the nose. And notice how it feels with your belly pressed against your mat. Notice if it feels different at all. And as you breathe in, notice if you can feel your belly starting to push towards the mat. So you're starting to expand the belly here as you start to take that really lovely deep breath in. Let that breath journey all the way up through the body and then breathe it out through the nose and really push the breath out through the nose if you've been doing my guide at all or if you are a regular yoga practitioner, see if you can do that Ujjayi breath, so that hushing sound at the back of the throat. So we're starting to fire up that core at the beginning of our class. So we breathe in through the nose and we breathe out through the nose. And then as you kind of settle onto your mat, I want you to notice this natural curve of your spine, this natural alignment. And this is our, our spine's neutral alignment here. When we come to stand up, gravity takes over and different habits take over and this positioning in the back tends to become out of alignment. 
and you see it a lot in people's postures. So for somebody who might feel a little anxious, perhaps you tend to tuck. So our pelvis tends to be in front of the toes. So we start to over round the lower back or we start to hudge the shoulders where we're so used to looking down and rounded and protecting our heart space. So when we lie here on our belly, it's a nice opportunity to just kind of take the pressure off of our backs and just start to feel this natural alignment in the spine. So I want you to be really aware of these natural curves. And when we come to stand, we're gonna just start to come into this alignment here. Now, turn your head to the left as you start to, as you press down through your right cheek, and just start to open up the neck here, just very subtly. Again, focusing on that breath. So in the class today, we're gonna to be exploring those different ranges of movement that we have in our spine. And we're gonna be working those muscles that sit all along this either side of the spine. And we're gonna get even deeper as well. So when we have weakness in the muscles such as the glutes and the core, we tend to overcompensate these muscles along the spine. Just turn your head the other side so we stretch the other side of the neck. So when we overcompensate the other muscles in the spine because our other muscles aren't working, well that's when we can get things like backache or pain in our lower backs um, and this poor alignment, this poor posture. So we're going to be working subtly on those muscles and we're really going to be exploring going into those little back bends, those forward folds, those side bends, because that's the best way to keep your spine nice and healthy, to explore all the different ranges of movement here. Now, as you bring your forehead back to centre, we're going to just notice this subtle switching on of the TVA muscles, those transverse abdominis. They're really deep little stabiliser muscles that lie in the core. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this big breath in through the nose, and as you exhale, I want you to feel this drawing up and in through the tummy. It's a really subtle movement as you start to pull the belly button up towards the spine. And you kind of feel this switching on here. The tibia is like this corset muscle. So you kind of feel like they're drawing inwards. It's a really subtle movement. And then release. So again, you're going to draw in as you exhale. Really forcefully push the breath out through the nose. Almost like you're going to cough. <coughs> Can you feel that? jerking action, that drawing in, in the tummy. And then from here, you're gonna bring yourself up onto the forearms as we come into our sphinx pose, palms pressed down, elbows under shoulders, and just draw the shoulders back. So again, you're pressing down through the tops of the feet, and now you're starting to feel those glutes switch on too. When we don't use our glutes in our back bends, that's when you start to feel pinching here, and that's when you can get discomfort. So big inhale, as you exhale, chin to chest, and you're almost rounding the belly. As you round in the back, as you draw the tummy upwards, you're rounding the upper back here, then inhale, you reach the heart and chest forward. So it's like this little cat cow motion. Exhale, you're drawing in through the tummy muscles. Keep those glutes nice and engaged. Inhale, come forward. Then bringing your left knee into the side here, so we come into this half frog pose. So we start to open up this hip. So we're opening the hip flexor here, the psoas muscle, which again connects to our back. So when we've got tightness and weakness here, you feel it in the back. Breathe into here. And then see if you can straighten that leg. If straighten the leg's too much for you today, don't worry, keep it bent. If you can, lift that left elbow and bring your right arm underneath the left. You weave that arm through. Your left arm comes all the way up. We're coming into that first twist as you bring your left shoulder down. And if your left shoulder is lifted here and you're really dumping it into the right, don't worry if this leg lifts slightly. Really press this left shoulder down. And then with your right hand, you can think about bringing that leg down. Now, if you're able to get this leg straight with your right hand, see if you can reach for your left big toe and pull that leg up. Don't worry if you can't reach it here. Press your right foot away. You can just grab the calf or the ankle if you need to. And then roll it all the way onto your back. So now your left foot is pressed up to the sky. Bringing your fingertips to the crown of the head. Now, like we did lying on our front, forcibly exhale through the nose and start to feel these muscles engage. So they're drawing in. And it's almost like you're pressing your back, lower back down into the mat. Then lift the shoulders up off of the mat if you can. So we're starting to switch on these core muscles. Lift that lower leg. Squeeze the thighs together. Breathe in. As you exhale, maybe you lift up a little higher here. Switch the legs. Switch again. One more time. 
and then bring the knees in, release, roll it back onto your belly. So we're going to take those stretches the other way, so back into that sphinx pose. Slide your right knee into the waist. If it's happy here with the leg bend, you can stay with the leg bend. Otherwise, see if you can straighten that leg out to the side. Pressing through the big toe edge as your little toe lifts. And then lifting that right elbow, bring your left arm through as you roll it onto your back hip. And again, you want this shoulder down, so if it's lifted, see if you can really start to adjust that upper back, adjust the body as you need to, to bring that shoulder down, even if that means that leg stays lifted. Then if you can straighten this right leg, see if you can grab the big toe as you pull that leg up. Feeling this lovely stretch all down the side of the leg here. Nice deep breaths. Release the big toe, come up to your back. Again, so drawing in, breathe out, possibly exhale. If it helps to cough, to visualize that movement, you can do that. Fingertips to the temples, lift the shoulders. See if you can lift that underneath leg. Breathe it out here, keep this tummy nice and engaged. We're gonna switch the legs. Long exhales, again, switch. One more time. And then release, bring the knees into the chest. Little rock side to side. And then from here, roll it all the way back onto our tummies. Nice work. So from here, bring your bottom wrist, bring your wrist, sorry, towards your bottom ribs and press the hands down. So can you see how my arms are in these right, this right angle position? Squeeze those elbows in. So rather than letting the elbows flare out to the side, draw the shoulders in towards one another. Elbows in, press down through the tops of the feet, glutes are engaged. Inhale, lift the chest. As we start to work those postural muscles, gaze comes forward. I'm not using my hands to lift, it's just using the muscles in the back. Then as you tuck the toes under, press all the way up onto the knees, and then rock it out. Rolling it around side to side. Maybe you can come up onto the fingertips if that feels okay. As we start to open up the hands. Nice deep breaths here. Just moving side to side, stretching out the waist, exploring the hips. As we come back to centre, pressing the hands down, you're going to turn the fingertips to the outside edges of the mat. Just see if you can bring the wrists together. If that's too much, keep them wider apart. And you're just going to rock it side to side here. Nice deep breath. And if it feels okay, turn the fingertips towards the back of the mat. Don't worry if this range of movement isn't in your practice today. You can stay with the fingertips outside to the edges. Anything I do, if it gets a bit too much, just bring it back to the pose we did before and just make the movement smaller. There's no pressure to do any of the movements here. Circle it around the other way. And then bring your fingertips forward. Now from here, walk your hands forward, start to drop the chest slightly as we come into this puppy pose and we're stretching out those front shoulder muscles all across the pecs. We're going to bring the forehead down, green. Inhale, come back up. Walk in the hands in. From here, we're going to tuck, in, tuck the toes under, lift the hips up, come back into that downward dog, first downward dog of the class. Now just take a few movements here to get comfortable here in downward dog. Maybe you adjust the hands, you adjust the feet, whatever you need. And notice if you're dumping the weight back into the wrist and you're, if your fingertips are lifted here, try pressing down through the knuckles and the fingertips. So you're almost gripping down into the mat. That's going to take some of the pressure out of the wrist. Big breath in through the nose. This time exhale it out through the mouth, big sigh. <sighs> Let it go. In through the nose. And as you exhale, just walk the feet forward, come into the top of your mat, into that first forward fold. So feet hip width apart, that's about two fists in between the feet. Big toes point forward. Now if you find that you're doing this, bend the knees. Bring the belly down to the thighs and then bring the hands down, relax the neck, relax the head. Shake it out. Inhale, half lift, chest is halfway. Exhale to fold. So now we're exploring that fold in the back. You're releasing any tension here. And this should feel quite nice in the body, nice release for that lower back. 
Inhale, lift halfway. Bend the knees, you're gonna use those glutes as you press through the heels, arms reach around you, rise all the way up, palms together. Exhale, bring hands to heart. Now I want you to notice what your position is. Are you a tucker? Is your pelvis reaching past the toes? Glutes under? Are you an archer? Can you try and find that happy medium here? So just have a few little pelvic tilts, little roll throughs until you find that sort of neutral alignment here. Big breath in, belly expands. Exhale, draw in this subtle turning on of the stabilizer muscles. And then now as you inhale, reach the arms up. I want you to feel like you're sliding the sternum back, so you're almost just peeling the chest up towards the sky. This lower part of the body stays as still as you can as you just start to open the upper back. And then exhale, hands to heart. Bend the knees, take it all the way back into that forward fold. Inhale, lift in the chest. And as we exhale, step your right foot back, all the way back. Now if your foot's too close to you, you're going to see it by your hips being up high in the air. So see if you can take this back foot as far back as you can, so that you're, you've got this lovely line from your heel of your left foot up to the knee, back to the sit bone. Hands either side of your front foot as you look forward, shoulders back. Keep those tummies nice drawing in, and as we're going to rock forwards and backwards, and you can make it as big or as small a rock as it feels good in the body. So we start to stretch out those hips and the backs of the legs. Nice deep breaths. And then the next time you rock forward, bring that back knee down. As you bring your hands onto that left thigh, really push that thigh away from you. We're stretching out that hip here. Nice deep breaths. And then from here, you're going to bring the arms up as you inhale, we'll bring palms together. Stretch up as high as you can. As you exhale, bring hands to heart. And then you're going to use that whole exhale to twist to the left. So you're twisting from your center. You're trying to keep your hips as still as possible. It might be that you only come to here, and this is absolutely fine. But you might be able to explore that moat range of movement just a little bit further as you twist a little bit deeper, extend through the arms. Imagine you're being pulled through the left arm and the right arm. So we're going to combine a mixture of active stretches with passive stretches. So let's switch on those muscles first as we actively get into that twist. And then bring the hands together, lean forward to bring your right elbow onto that left thigh. We press the hands, lift the chest away. Remember, if this, isn't, if this is too much, you can stay up to here. But this twist is really lovely for the back. So again, we're exploring that range of movement in our spine. Breathe into here. Then as we come up, release the arms once more. Stretch a little deep, maybe this left shoulder comes back a little more, this right shoulder comes forward. Then bring this left hand towards the right leg if you can. Right arm reaches up as we start to open and come into a little bit of a back bend here. Reach this right arm up as high as you can. Try to keep some engagement in the core here. Three. Bring it back. Start to come back to center. We're gonna twist the other way. Twist to the right. This side will feel easier because we've got no restriction here. Then you're gonna lift that back knee, bring that back heel down into warrior two. If you're looking and thinking, how the hell did you just do that? You can bring your hands down, then lift the knee. Then bring it up. So have a little peek at the feet. You want heel to arch here. Front knee over that ankle. Keep that core nice and engaged. We don't want to stick our bottoms out. Almost draw an under as we extend through the arms. Big inhale. Exhale it out. Turn the left palm up. Inhale, sweep it over to the right. So to the back of the room. So you're coming into this reverse worry here. Breathe into those ribs. Let's feel that stretch. Exhale, warrior two. Now as you exhale, lean forward a little more. Let's start to just feel those little muscles working here. And then from here, right arm comes up. Look over in front of you. If you need to make it easier, bring your left forearm to the left thigh. But see if you can keep your left fingertips reaching in line with your left toes. And then see if you can bring your right arm down to reach towards the front of the mat also. You're pressing through this left heel, bring this right shoulder back. Really squeezing through those tummies. And back into warrior two. Nice work, everyone. Let's come to the top of our mat. Shake out those legs. 
Really strong. Now from here, you bring that right knee in. Now keep your gaze focused. If you've got your gaze fixed, it's going to be a lot easier for your balance. Then from here, with your left hand, either grab your right thigh and then twist. Or see if you can, grab your big toe, extend the leg, I'll come back so you can see, extend the leg forward and then twist. And if you can, see if you can let go of the toe but keep your leg here. Can you feel all these muscles working to hold you in place? So this is really active movement in the body. And then release hands to heart. So strong, everyone. So we're going to go through the other side. So take a big breath in. Inhale. Again, think about that really strong center. You're peeling up from the chest. So we're not dumping our hips forward. So really subtle movement as you peel the chest up. Look up to the sky if you can. And then exhale to centre. Take it all the way down into that fold. Inhale, lift the heart, lift the chest. And as you exhale, left foot comes back. Remember, as far back as you can. Hands either side of your right foot. And just start to rock forwards and backwards here. Just starting to stretch it out. Nice deep breaths. And then as you come forward, see if you can bring that back knee down. Now, if you're feeling this in your back knee, I forgot to say, you can fold that edge of the mat over. You can use a blanket there, anything you need. So as you bring your hands onto that front leg, just push that thigh away from you. Notice if this front knee shoots past the toes. If you're doing this, I want you to take this back leg back or take that front foot forward. It means you need to get a little deeper into this stretch. Then from here, let's come into that twist. So just try to feel that little engagement here in the cross, so just that drawing in. One way I like to think of it is your bottom ribs trying to meet with your hips without rounding the back. Bring the arms up as you inhale, palms together. Exhale, hands come to heart. So it's that restriction in the back of the throat as you push the breath out through the nose. Then see if you can twist to the right. So it can be a slow movement, twisting just as much as you can. Remember, you know your limit, so only go where your body will allow you to go. Then see if you can extend through the arms, and maybe by opening the arms, you're able to get deeper as your right shoulder comes back more, your left shoulder comes forward. Keep, feel like you're trying to squeeze the thighs towards one another, so you're not dropping the front knee out to the side. Then as you slowly bring hands to heart, you're going to bring the back of this left arm onto your right thigh if you can. Press the palms together and look over your right shoulder. It's like you're trying to lift your belly away from your front leg. Breathe into here. And then slowly come back up. Stay in this twist. You're opening through the arms. You're going to bring your right hand towards your left leg as your left arm comes up. Again, you're trying to peel the chest up. So we're not crunching the lower back, we're lengthening up and then opening here. Now only go as far as you can, as soon as you start to feel any pinching, you bring it up, you make the movement smaller. And then coming back into that open twist, as we twist the other way, it's going to feel quite a nice release. See if you can lift that back knee off the mat, bring the heel down. So we're opening into that warrior too, so you've got that heel in line with that arch of that back foot. Fingertips point either side, look over your right hand. Big breath in. Oh, breathing it out. Right palm turns up, inhale. Stretch over to the back of the mat. Feel this opening in the right side of the body. Notice if you're puffing out those ribs, when we want to draw in. Really strong. And back into warrior two. Now we're going to start to feel those muscles working here. So I want you to extend forward without moving your legs. Your legs aren't moving here, it's from the hip. You'll reach forward as far as you can. If you need to bring that forearm onto the thigh, otherwise see if you can keep it lifted. Left arm comes up and see if you can reach your left fingertips forward to the front of the room. Now rather than dropping that left shoulder forward, bring it back. So you're stacking the shoulders on top of one another. Maybe you drop a little lower. Keep pressing through that little toe of that back foot. Really strong, everyone. And back into warrior two. Nice work. Step to the top of your mat. Bring that left knee in. So remember, keep your gaze focused somewhere that doesn't move. Option one, you bring your right hand to the left thigh as you twist and bring your left arm back. 
Option two, see if you can grab the big toe, or if you can't reach the big toe, see if you can straighten the leg and hold the calf. You don't want to lift this left hip up, so you're going to drop it so your hips are nice and level. And you've got this beautiful opening across the chest. And again, this lovely twist in the spine. Breathe into here. See if you can let go of that leg, but can you hold it there in place? You're probably feeling the muscles starting to shake a little bit, maybe. Breathe into here, twist a little deeper. And then release, bring hands to heart. Nice work, everyone. Inhale, arms reach up, come back into that little micro bend. Exhale, arms reach down the backs of the legs, back into that fold. And as you come into this fold, this time cross the arms, add that little sway. Side to side. Releasing the neck, the shoulders. Inhale, lift the chest. Have a little bend of the knees, bring the hands behind the back, see if you can interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulders together and then drop down a little more as you let the arms hang over and just work side to side. And then release the hands down, lift the chest. One more time, exhale, come down, arms come up, switch the interlink of the thumb, squeeze the shoulders together. Have a little rock side to side. So we're just stretching out those shoulders. And then release. Bring the arms down. Inhale, lift the chest halfway. As you exhale, step right foot back, left foot. Come onto the knees, come all the way onto the belly as we began. So we're going to come into a pose known as Shalabhasana, locust pose. We've got so many fancy names for all these yoga poses. Um, but we're, it's a really nice, well, I say nice loosely, it's a good way to strengthen our postural muscles. So from here, rather than having your feet wide, again, come back to hip width, press down through the tops of the feet. Your knees should feel like they're lifting off of the mat. As your quads are super engaged, your glutes are working too. Then from here, bring the fingertips to the temples, forehead onto the mat. As you inhale, use your muscles here. So again, you've got this engagement in the core and you're using your glutes as you slowly peel that chest up, just as high as you can. And it might be that you come up a few inches and that's okay. As you start to find that lift, then see if you can add the legs. If you can do this, see if you can bring the arms behind you, see if you can interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulders together. Maybe you lift up a little higher here and breathe. Point those toes away from you. Nice deep breaths. And then slowly lower back down. Give the hips a little shake. Now we're gonna come into a back bend. If you felt any pinch in there, if you've got anything going on with the lower back, you're gonna miss this back bend out. You can either stay in the Sphinx pose like we did at the start, come back into Shalabhasana, or you're going to come into a bow pose with me. So you'll bring your feet in towards you. Take a hold of the outside feet or the ankles. Notice how many are nice and really wide. You're going to bring them in. You're going to reach your toes back. As you reach back, you're going to rock up, peeling that chest up. Your glutes are working. Keep your thighs engaged. You're trying to draw your legs in towards one another. You're really working your glutes to take it out of the lower back. As you open across the chest, open the shoulders, breathe into here. And then when you're ready to come out of it, you'll slowly come down. Make a little pillow off the hands and you're going to rock those hips side to side. Breathe into here. Really strong, everybody. So we just spent that last 30 minutes just going through various different movements to strengthen, to open, to stretch. And we're going to come back into that twist we did at the start, but we're going to make it a little bit more passive and we're going to relax into it. So as you press your left hand down to the side, bring your left knee into the waist. Bring your right arm underneath the left arm as your left arm comes all the way back. Just have a little shuffle to bring both shoulders down. And you can keep this left leg bent here, it doesn't need to be straight, just almost relax it. With your right hand, maybe you can press down onto that top leg and you can just look over your left shoulder here. 
and breathe. So you might hear a few, um, you might have had a few clicks as you come all the way over. I quite like that, it's a nice little stretch. This is nice for stretching out our core muscles and the back. So if you do have any kind of, if you do get back aches at all, um, this is quite a nice release to come into. It's one of my favourite twists. Slowly roll back onto your front. Let's take that the other way. So you're going to bring your right hand beside your elbow over the wrist. Slide your right knee into the waist. Bring your left arm through and have a little roll to bring your both shoulders down onto the mat as you look over your right shoulder and you're kind of just sort of surrendering into the pose. If you want, if this leg is really lifted, you can bring your left hand onto that thigh and just let the weight of that arm just bring it down slightly. And again, just try to regulate that breathing, slowing it down. In and out through the nose. Rolling all the way onto the backs. Bring your knees into the chest. And let's massage that lower back, a little rock side to side. Then take your knees nice and wide. So you're trying to bring your knees towards the armpits. And you can either stay with the hands on the shins for this supportive version of Happy Baby. Or maybe bring the hands around the thighs as you lift the heels, bring the knees down. Toes reach up. But if you can keep this back pressed down onto the mat and go deeper in the hip opening, you can bring your hands around the feet. But sometimes when you do that, you start to tilt those hips up. So really actively press that lower back down. And then you can rock it side to side. So by having that lower back press down, we're also giving the back a nice stretch here too. Giving it a little massage. Then maybe you can straighten out the right leg, press that heel away. Then the left. Then both. Taking the legs out wide, press the heels away. Nice stretch. Release the arms, feet together. Wiggle through the ankles and the toes. And just bring the hands around the thighs, just gently pull in towards you. Just feeling that stretch down the back of the legs, press the heels up. And then release. Taking any little movements you need here. So we're going to come into Shavasana. So you can either have the feet wide, let the knees fall into one another. This is quite a nice release for the lower back, especially when we've been doing some back bends here. Otherwise, if you have a really busy day today, you can join me in seated. If you don't want to be too relaxed, and you can choose which seat you come into. I'd recommend sitting onto either a yoga block or a cushion. I'm gonna. Ha I've got my legs like this, but Shavasana, there is no right or wrong way to do it. That's the beauty of it. You can just choose a pose that you feel most comfortable in. So find that position now in the body. And if you have opted to lie down, just have your arms resting out to the side, palms facing up. If you've opted to come seated with me, let's just bring the backs of the hands onto the thighs with the palms facing up. And I want you to, if it feels comfortable enough to do so, close the eyes. If not, just keep your gaze fixed somewhere low. Otherwise, as you close the eyes, just notice how your body feels now at the end of your practice. Notice if here you've automatically gone into this sort of protective mode where you're rounding the shoulders forward and you're kind of hunched up. Just see if you can have a little lift as you roll the shoulders down the back. Plenty of space for us to be able to breathe nice and deeply into the belly. Let's take that lovely deep breath in through the nose. And out through the nose. Let it go. This time as you breathe in through the nose. Breathe all the way up and see if you can hold the breath in at the top. And see if you can draw in a little bit more breath, hold it in. And then release, let it go. And as you let go of the breath completely, hold the breath out. And see if you can push any more breath out through the nose, hold it out. 
and then release. Let's come into your natural rhythm of the breath now, in and out through the nose, relaxing the belly. Roll the shoulders a couple times maybe, just feel the muscles here relax. Notice if you're gripping the teeth and just allow the muscles in the jaw to soften. Relax in the eye. And then as you sit or lie here, I want you to bring your awareness, your attention to any noise you hear outside of your room. So it could be perhaps you can hear the birds in the garden, you can hear cars passing by. Or you can hear loved ones talking, chatting away. Notice all these little sounds. Rather than letting these sounds be distractions to you, let them help you and be a part of your practice. Then start to bring that awareness to any sounds that you hear inside of your room. Maybe you hear floorboards creaking. Maybe you hear silence. Then journey a little closer, noticing what sounds you hear on your mat. Maybe you can hear your breathing. Allow that sound to soothe you. and start to notice how the air feels against your skin, the temperature. And as we come back to journey even closer, bring that awareness back to the breath. Take a lovely deep inhale through the nose. And this time, open the mouth wide and let out a deep sigh as you exhale. And then the awareness back into the fingers and the toes. And if you are lying down, just slowly bring yourself over onto your favorite side. Before rolling up to join me in seated. bring hands to heart and perhaps here you can set yourself an intention for your day and then let us bow our heads in gratitude as we close our practice this morning namaste